the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord of Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who gave us the Paschal Mystery, in the covenant you established for reconciling the human race, so dispose our minds, we pray, that what we celebrate by professing the faith, we may express in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After the crippled man had been cured, while Peter and John were still speaking to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and the Sadducees confronted them. Disturbed, they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They laid hands on Peter and John and put them in custody until the next day, since it was already evening. But many of those who heard the word came to believe, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. On the next day, their leaders, elders, and scribes were assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who of the high priestly class. They brought, him into their they brought them into their presence and questioned them, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, answered them, Leaders of the people, elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, namely, by what means he was saved, then all of you and all the people of Israel should know that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. In his name, this man stands before you healed. He is the stone rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation through anyone else, nor is there any other name under heaven given to the human race by which we are to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The stone rejected by the builders 
has become the cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. O Lord, grant salvation. O Lord, grant prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus revealed himself again to his disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. He revealed himself in this way. Together were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, Zebedee's sons, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we also will come with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. When it was already dawn, Jesus was standing on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, have you caught anything to eat? They answered him, No. So he said to them, Cast the net over the right side of the boat, and you will find something. So they cast it, and were not able to pull it in because of the number of the fish. So the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he tucked in his garment, for he was lightly clad, and jumped into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat. For they were not far from the shore, only about a hundred yards, dragging the net with the fish. When they climbed out on shore, they saw a charcoal fire with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you just caught. So Simon Peter went over and dragged the net ashore, full of 153 
large fish. Even though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come, have breakfast. And none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they realized it was the Lord. Jesus came over and took the bread and gave it to them, and in like manner the fish. This was now the third time Jesus was revealed to his disciples after being raised from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, there's lots of rich stuff in this one right here. Um, but before we jump into the Gospel according to John, I want to just look real quick at that um, reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Remember that this is the man, Peter, who was afraid to tell a servant girl while he was warming his, warming his hands by a fire outside of the house of Caiaphas. He was afraid to tell that servant girl and then to tell another and then to tell a crowd that he was, in fact, one of Jesus' disciples. Remember, he even swears. He even uses bad language, saying, I don't know, you know, him, and then adds all that colorful language there. In other words, you say, get away from me. I don't know this man. And now look at him. He's captured by the temple guard, and then he and John are brought before the leaders, elders, scribes, assembled in Jerusalem. And guess who's there? Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly class. This is the Sanhedrin. Do you remember one of the last times that they met together? Remember Caiaphas? Caiaphas is the one who is presiding over that court where Jesus Christ was on trial. And Caiaphas says, I ask you, in the name of the Lord, are you the Christ, the Son of the living God? And Jesus says, I am. And you will see the Son of Man coming on the throne with power, coming in the clouds. And that's when Caiaphas rips his garments and says, he has blasphemed. He deserves death. Peter was afraid of even saying, not to even that Sanhedrin, but someone way outside of that circle who said, hey, aren't you one of his disciples? And now he's right in front of that same Sanhedrin. He's right where Jesus Christ was. And it says he's filled with the Holy Spirit and he answers them. And he doesn't, like, answer them in a way of saying, well, you know, we were just kind of helping someone out, and, you know, you might have heard the name wrong. We didn't really say Jesus. We just kind of said, Lord, help him. And yet, this is what he says. He says, leaders who are here, Sanhedrin, same guys who sentenced Jesus to death, I'm right in that same spot. But if we're being examined today about a good deed done to a cripple, in other words, how he was healed, then I want to be very, very clear. Everyone here should know, without a doubt, that it was in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene. And in fact, he's the one that you crucified, but God raised him from the dead. And in his name, this man who was standing before you, it's in his name that that man was healed. And then he goes on saying, he quotes scripture to the Sanhedrin. He quotes Psalm 118, which we just, which we just sung, saying, the stone, he is that stone that's rejected by you, the builders. And that stone has actually become the cornerstone. And then he says, there's no salvation through anyone else. In other words, what he's saying there is, he is equal to God. Jesus Christ is equal to God. Because it is only God who saves. It is only the Lord who saves. And Jesus Christ is saying, there is no one who can receive salvation other than through the name of Jesus Christ. Which is the name of the Son of God. Do 
you see the courage, the power that this man has in front of the Sanhedrin that he was so afraid before to even get close to. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He takes cowardly men and makes them powerful ambassadors of the truth, of healing. Now I want you to now look and see Peter had to go on the way. Remember we have this theme that keeps coming up. Following the Lord on the way. That's the original title of Christianity. Before they were called Christians in Antioch, they were called followers of the way. And so we see Peter and Thomas and Nathaniel and these different disciples in the midst of being on the way to more fully embrace the Lordship of Jesus Christ. A big thing happens in their life in the midst of the resurrection, in the midst of um, even, even Thomas feeling the wounds and then falling on his knees and saying, My Lord and my God. Those are powerful moments in which the disciples walked along that way to say more and more, Jesus Christ is Lord. But notice what happens here. This is a very interesting moment. So, this is after Jesus appeared to them twice already. Now it says, Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. And they say, well, we'll come with you. So they went out, got into the boat, but that night caught nothing. In a certain sense, there's this way in which they kind of regress. Doesn't this happen in our own lives? Maybe it's something where we, we have found the Lord, we have met the Lord, but then there's certain times where we just sort of find ourselves kind of going back to our older habits. And this is one of those signs. Instead of going forth and proclaiming the kingdom of God, there's this, there's this hidden statement here of, when Simon Peter says, I'm going fishing, it's sort of like, you know, I'm just going to go back to the way that things were. It's kind of like that temptation in the midst of the coronavirus to say, you know, when all this is over, I want to just go back to what was normal before. And yet, we should be looking at saying, before was not the authentic way of living a radical life in Jesus Christ. We were living a very comfortable life. A very insulated life. And so moving forward, going through this journey, this way with the Lord, the Lord wants us to embrace a new normal, a way in which we have a radical love for our neighbor, the way in which we have a radical embracing of the gospel and being willing to be like Peter, courageously going into those areas that maybe we were afraid of going before. So the Lord wants us to come back as a parish stronger than the past normal. So that's something to think about in the midst of this, is that we have the temptation to regress, to go back to business as usual. Simon Peter and the disciples do this. And for that reason, they weren't able to see the Lord at the very beginning. Remember how Jesus appears? He's standing at the shore, and he says, Children, have you caught anything to eat? Again, that's kind of like what he said before when he first met them. So they kind of regress to their former way of life. Jesus now meets them there in order to bring them back along that way. Remember, it's this whole theme of Jesus searches for us. Even when we fall back, he doesn't leave us there. He doesn't reject us. But he comes in search of us. He's the good shepherd looking for the lost sheep. And maybe many of us who are the 99, who maybe are saying, well, you know, I mean, we're, we're, we're following the Lord. Maybe there's a way in which we have to rediscover that we are a lost sheep. And we need to be found every single day. Because every single day there's some way in which we kind of just move back. 
and the Lord wants to find us and through his mercy bring us forward. So they say no. Again, it's that insight of they want to try to go back to the way things were before, and then they're like, hey, how come we weren't, how come we aren't catching anything? Well, they didn't catch anything before without Jesus, and they're not going to catch anything now without Jesus. And so it's the same thing where, you know, sometimes there's that with that definition of insanity, that we just keep trying the same thing over and over, and it's like, hey, we're not getting good results. And insanity is just to keep doing it over and over. So moving forward, the Lord wants to guide us into this new normal, this radical being filled with the Holy Spirit, being courageous. And that has to start now, during this time of involuntary retreat. Are you taking that time to not go back to the old habits, but to actually form new habits now? New habits of taking the time to really reach out to others, to pray with others, to maybe get on the phone together and say, hey, let's pray the rosary together. Hey, let's just get together. Let's do Google Meet or Zoom or something like that. And let's just build this spiritual dimension of our relationship a little more. Maybe in the family where we were so used to um, being so scattered. Are you forming habits right now of having that family meal together, of praying together, at the family meal, of maybe opening scripture together, talking about it, leading your children in the ways of holiness. There's so much here that the Lord wants us to form new habits. So now we continue. They now listen to the Lord. Again, we need to listen to the inspiration of the Lord. The Lord's going to touch each of our hearts during this time of coronavirus, this time of involuntary retreat. He wants to touch those areas, and he wants to give us insight to say, why don't you throw your nets on this side? Because maybe we've been going this way, and being like, hey, how come I'm not growing? It's like, well, maybe you need to kind of go on this side. And then when we do, then it's anointed with the Lord's call instead of our call. And then there's a fruit that happens. And the fruit that happens here is there's so many fish they're not able to pull it in. And it's in that moment that St. John, because he has this deep, deep love for the Lord, he's the one who sees and recognizes the Lord first. That's also another insight. To the extent that we love, to the extent that we open our heart and truly hunger for the Lord, is to the extent that we're going to recognize him, even in some of the distressing disguises that are there. So he says, Peter, it is the Lord. And then you see Peter with this beautiful gesture of love in which he doesn't waste any time. He just throws himself off the boat and starts swimming. And they aren't even that, I mean, he could have easily just taken a couple extra minutes and just bring his boat all the way in because they're only 100 yards off. But he doesn't want to wait. He wants the Lord. And he's willing to just forget everything and jump in. That's the great gift of Peter. Even though he falls, even though he puts his foot in his mouth so many different times, he never gives up. Because he knows that the Lord never gives up on him. Now, as he comes, he notices something there. It says that Jesus was standing by a charcoal fire. There was bread and there was fish on it. He was making breakfast, but... That word, charcoal fire, it's a very unique word in the Bible, in Greek. And the last time that you see this word is actually the charcoal fire that Peter himself was warming his hands as he was denying Jesus Christ three times. It's the same word. It's a very unique word, which means that John wrote this gospel saying, I want you to connect these moments because Peter connected it. Peter comes in, he sees that, and it reminds him of the time in which he betrayed the Lord. He denied him. And tomorrow we're going to see that it is Jesus who then will walk Peter through on the way, that healing of his threefold rejection by saying, Peter, 
do you love me? And we see Peter being healed in that moment because he is going to be called to a very important mission. The Lord will say, feed my sheep, feed my lambs. And we see him doing that by leading the church during the time of the Acts of the Apostles, boldly proclaiming that Jesus Christ is Lord. We're going to see Peter, an image of his ministry, because he becomes the first pope. When Jesus says, bring some of the fish that you caught. And then it's Simon Peter who goes over. He drags the net ashore, and it's full of 153 large fish. And there were so many, the net was not torn. 153 large fish was the amount of languages at that particular time that were known in the world. And so it was a way of saying, Peter is being called to gather everyone in the world into, his, into the Lord's one holy Catholic and apostolic church. That word Catholic means universal. Everyone is called to this family. No one is to be excluded. No language, no race, no culture. All are being called. And this net is a net that will not break. Even though there's scandal, even though there's weeds, even though there's, there's so many different things that we hear about that can just pull us down, the Lord makes a promise to Peter saying, the gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. It might be purified, it might be broken, but it will not be torn. That's why it's important for us to come into this net more and more faithfully. To know that through the ministry of the Vicar of Christ on earth, now Pope Francis, that our Lord makes a promise to gather the people to God in holiness. So let's continue on the way, living our Christian life in such a way that we don't go back to the way things were before, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, we enter more deeply into that net that wants to gather us and gather our brothers and sisters in the world deeper into relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, gathered as one people, we place our needs and desires before God our Father. For Pope Francis, in his role holding the chair of Peter, may Jesus' strength and power continue to flow through him in his ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those appointed to civic authority, may God give them wisdom in working with humility and steadfastness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer with disabilities, may God's grace shine through them abundantly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us on our Easter journey, may God's revelation of life conquering death continue to help us grow in faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful who have died, especially remember their close to the soul of Elizabeth Q. Heard. May they praise God in the company of the angels of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all the intentions within Our Lady's intercessory box. We pray for all those who are struggling in the midst of this time of pandemic, both those who are suffering from the effects of this illness, but also those who are struggling financially right now through the loss of jobs, through the various fears, the various worries of providing. We pray that the Holy Spirit might give them peace and strength, and that as we move forward into this new normal, that we might radically love our neighbor as ourself, and find those ways of making sure to lift up those who are feeling lonely, afraid, 
are struggling in various ways, that we might stretch ourselves so that they might find rest and strength. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Almighty, ever-living and powerful God, you showed us the way of salvation through your Holy Son. Hear and answer the prayers we offer today. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. You, Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise and glory in his name for our good and good of all this holy church. Perfect within us, O Lord, we pray, the solemn exchange brought about by these paschal offerings, that we may be drawn from earthly desires to a longing for the things of heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, that on this day above all blood yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover hath has been sacrificed, for it is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world, by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalt, singing your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts 
Sing together the ending hymn of your glory as the day of play. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabao, Plenis Uncelli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, within it in Domine Domini, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have called us worthy be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope, and Daniel our Bishop, Richard our Administrator, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be held heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
but by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, where the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Jesus said to his disciples, Come and eat. And he took bread and gave it to them. Alleluia. Now let us pray the act of spiritual communion. Just let the Lord lead you along the way. Listen to his voice as he says, why don't you try the other side? May our hearts be open to be like John crying out, it is the Lord. And then to be like Peter, not waiting, but jumping into the sea, swimming towards the Lord. He who finds us, may we respond with a generous heart. My Jesus, I truly believe that you are present in the sacraments of the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Grace you as if you are already there. Never let me be parted from you. Amen.
keep safe, O Lord, we pray. Those whom you have saved by your kindness, that redeemed by the passion of your Son, they may rejoice in his resurrection, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Alleluia, ora pro nobis Dei. 